To be truly British means speaking more than one language. Hello, I am Sophia. I am a journalist, author, and content creator. If you've been following me for the past five years on TikTok and Instagram, you'll know that alongside reporting jobs at the BBC, at Vice, as a freelancer, I've also been making content about my biggest passion, language and languages. And something that I wanna make happen when I write in traditional media about language is to make sure that there is a nice YouTube home for that content as well. So without further ado, I want to read you the piece. You might already know this, but in journalism, it's very rare that the writer gets to pick the headline. So I didn't pick this headline. You may agree, disagree with it, but you'll at least understand where it comes from uh, when you hear me expand on my thoughts. So here we go. To be truly British means speaking more than one language. It is our minority languages, from Cornish to Gaelic, that will feel some of the hardest blows if we don't better embrace them. To be British is to be multilingual. A statement that might jar with you if your impression of Britishness is dogged monolingualism. But not only does that image ignore the many millions of immigrants and their children who are British citizens and who pivot between languages every day, it obscures a growing interest in reviving the languages of the British Isles. An excellent example of this happened last week. Just two decades ago, the MP Andrew George was the first parliamentarian to swear allegiance to the Crown in Cornish when he was elected. This time round, all six of Cornwall's MPs chose to do the same. By law, MPs are obliged to do it in English and then have the option of repeating it in another language, if they so desire. As of last week, our current parliament chose to not only swear oaths of allegiance in English and Cornish, but also in Welsh, Ulster Scots, Scottish Gaelic, Doric and Punjabi. It does seem to be in pomp and circumstance and moments of heritage building that our linguistic diversity is most prominent. This week, King Charles and Queen Camilla are visiting the Channel Islands, while, which, while not part of the UK, are crown dependencies. Few seemed happier to see the royals than the Guernsey Language Commission, who are delighted to set up a display on the Crown Pier to showcase Gardnessier, a local variety of the Norman language. Charles and Camilla were greeted with a banner that assured them of their welcome. And this is what it said. And the Queen was sung a rendition of Happy Birthday in Sepkies. Have I pronounced that right? Probably not. I'm sorry. If you know how to pronounce it, please let me know. The variety found on the Channel Island of Sark. Leaflets were handed out with QR codes to help locals pronounce words correctly, and commissioners were on hand to share words and tips. Part of the excitement draws from the story of Charles spending nine weeks learning Welsh before his investiture as Prince of Wales in 1969. And the effort he went to has been remembered to the point that calls were made for Prince William to do the same in 2022. It was a huge milestone in the representation of British minority languages, languages where speakers often feel their community has suffered from linguicide, the phenomenon in which a language disappears or is actively disappeared due to reasons like state policy, colonization, or even assimilation. It is a matter that is also close to my heart. I am writing a book on linguicide, and in my own family, we prize our heritage language, a variety of the Emilian language in Italy, Emiliano, Piazzantin is, is my family's variety, which I have listened to my whole life and I'm now trying to learn. That's my Italian half sorted. For my British half, I too hope to one day familiarize myself at least with the linguistic features of languages like Welsh and Cornish, to understand more about my country's national heritage. At school, you're lucky if you're presented with French, Spanish or German. The internet now means we have access to many, many more language learning opportunities that may be far closer to us. Language learning brings immeasurable benefits to us from cognitive wellness into our later years, as well as exciting moments of connection. It doesn't really matter which one you pick to achieve those goals. Indigenous British languages are worthy of our increased attention. Cornish was extinct only a couple of hundred years ago, but revival efforts, which include proud moments of language reclamation, like we saw in Parliament last week, mean Cornwall Council now estimates there are four to 500 advanced speakers of Cornish, but also between two to 5,000 people who can speak the basics. However, small speaker communities are immensely fragile. Last year, the University of Aberdeen announced it would be scrapping all its single honours language degrees, which includes the teaching of Gaelic, which it has taught since 1495, blaming a steep fall in student numbers. Communities regularly call out for more money and better protections so that languages can continue to be taught and spoken. In the UK, language learning in schools has halved in the last 15 years, and you'll normally hear worries hone in on the most taught languages like French, German, 
But the reality is that this hurts a wider culture of language learning and respect for multilingualism, something that is deemed to be important elsewhere, but not here. As Cornwall Council said in its evidence to last year's Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport inquiry into minority languages, Cornish is not just for Cornwall, but a British cultural asset, which is at risk. It is our minority languages that will, invisible and ignored, feel some of the hardest blows if we don't better embrace them into British national identity. Is there a column or piece that you would like me to write about or something you'd like me to investigate? My Patreon subscribers are able to commission and give me ideas for video content. And when I'm not writing in traditional media, I'm writing in my Substack. So wherever you would like to support me, I'd be really, really grateful if you could subscribe. And obviously you can subscribe here on YouTube as well. What do you think it means to be truly British when it comes to languages?